Hello, everyone. My name is MJ Porchas. I also go by Ace It with MJ. I am a broker, coach, trainer, and educator, and I've been a top producer for over 33 years. Well, today, what I want to share with you is what I see most of the time that people struggle with, and that is what to say. So whether you are a seasoned agent or you are a new agent, many people have this, I don't know, I like to call it this allergy, you know, an allergic reaction to what's really important, which is role playing with scripts and dialogues. So today I'm going to briefly go over with you what I find really important and kind of help you get that cure for role playing allergies, if you will. And I'm going to give you some resources too. So why don't we go ahead and dive in and let's get going. So the cure to role-playing allergies, wow. Um, I know that you're probably going, yep, I have allergies to that, but we want to help you with that. First of all, why do we need to role-play? Why do we need to practice what we say? Well, first of all, because we want to be relevant to people and be able to be that trusted resource to them to be able to say, I believe I have an answer for you. And if I don't have the answer, I actually know where to get it. It's the confidence that gives you um, the ability to be able to move forward with people so they can say, you are the person that I trust. You are the person that I want to continue working with, right? Makes sense. Well, I want to ask you a question. Do you consider yourself a good listener? Well, do you? What are you listening for? We, we need to slow down and make sure that we are taking the time to hear what people are saying. What are their concerns? What are their fears? What excites them about wanting to move forward? And what is going to get them to actually say yes to wanting to work with you? So we do need to slow down and really think about, well, what are we listening for? And I really do believe that has a lot to do with asking great questions. Now, why do you get tongue tied? Well, I know you know it's because, again, I don't know what to say. And I know you'll probably agree with me. I don't practice, right? So when you have really great questions to ask people, it's going to move you into the direction of being able to hear and listen for those things that concern them. We call these things in the industry role-playing, scripts and dialogues, learning tie-downs, and embedded commands so that we don't get tongue-tied. We do need to practice not only in front of a mirror, but also with maybe another colleague or get into a role-playing uh, group of accountability every single day. Using tie downs is a really great way and it serves these four purposes that I wanna share. First of all, they keep the customer involved. They keep them involved in the conversation because you don't want that silence, the kind of silence that leaves you like, uh, what do I say next or <laughs> are we moving forward? Number two, they distract the customer from strong language patterns, you know, the language patterns that can be forceful or they're pushing back, maybe a little offensive or even on the defensive of, I don't want to give you any more information. They force the mind of the listener to have a specific structure to the thoughts that they're having. Now, the third purpose is they turn your statement from uncertain to certain, and they can be used fourthly to create a yes and set a closing pattern. Now, I do want to give you some resources today to be able to help you ask some really great questions. First of all, like when you're going to an open house and they've already looked at the house, now what are you going to say, right? Even there, you have to have good scripts and dialogues. You might want to say something like, well, what specific things did you like about the property? Uh, is this the area you're looking to buy in? Is this the price range that you're qualified for? Well, may I ask you, have you gone out to preview properties recent, recently or is this your first day? How are you previewing these homes? You know, are you previewing with an agent or driving around on your own? You see, you need to start getting into really good questions before you can get into what we call tie downs with embedded commands. And I am going to share some resources with you shortly. Repetition is the mother of skill. So you do need to get into daily practice of at least a minimum, no less than 15 minutes of getting started and kind of getting out all of the flustering of what you're going to say, even when you're preparing to make your follow-up calls, 
any calls to new leads, and especially when you're going to do an open house. Super important, right? Because then you're going to forget. And when it's fresh and on top of your mind, then you're like right on top of those good questions to get people into saying yes to you, right? So I want to take you in and share another screen with you, if I will, and take you into some of those questions. So let's take a quick peek. First, it's all about the questions, right? So I mentioned to you questions to ask buyers. Would you like to work with me so I can consult with you to better understand your specific needs? Ask for the business, right? When can we meet for a consultation? Weekdays or the weekend is better. You know, have you seen any properties that you like? Have you written any offers? How soon are you looking to purchase? Now, are you just starting to look and getting your feet wet or is this something you wanna move on right away? How much do you have for down payment? What is your initial investment? They sound like, come on, I know how to ask these questions, but are you repeating them in such a way that they don't stump you? It continues so that you can have a really great conversation, right? These are questions to ask buyers. What about sellers? You know, they walk in, they're checking out to see what you've done and how you're working to actually gain buyers because they might be considering to ask you to come and do um, an analysis on their home. Well, are you planning on making a move in the next three to six months? Are you planning on making a move before the spring? What season are you in, right? Now, would you prefer to buy before listing your home or do you need to sell first? Have you received an estimated evaluation on your home's current worth? Um, if you were to move, when do you think that might be? Do you have a trusted realtor to help you when the time is right? It needs to just flow off of your tongue not to get tongue tied. And that's called practice. That's the repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill. Now let's move into something a little different. I like to say offer value first, questions later. When we're making phone calls to people, always know what your objective of the phone call is. What is it? What am I calling for? Is it to get an appointment? Of course. Or is it to get a referral? Maybe. Maybe you're working to just establish a rapport and reconnect with somebody you haven't talked to for a long time, and you really just want to apologize. Or you want to just, of course, stay on top of mind with them, touch base with them, get up to date with their plans, follow up. You could use the Ford method, old adage we've been using for many years, and it's simple. Talk about their family. That's the F. Oh, ask them what's going on with their job. Any changes in relocation as far as their occupation? What about, what are they going to do this summer? Where are they going? Recreation. And that's the R. And D is for dreams. What are they hoping to do in the future, in the next year, two years? Are they planning to move? Maybe they're planning on um, buying another property out of state. Value first, questions later. Here's what I mean about value first. So the market in blank is blank. The market in the city of San Diego is amazing right now. What city are you interested in learning more about? In what city have you considered a move? It's again, asking them the question later, but offering them value about what's going on in a specific city. Maybe prices in Los Angeles have gone up 7% in 2023. When was the last time you had your home evaluation given to you? Or how about, you know, it's easier for banks to loan money. How much would you like to borrow? You want to offer value first and then ask the question. And I hope that makes sense. You know, banks are offering so many different programs with opportunities for first time buyers or veterans, maybe sellers needing to buy before selling. We call it a bridge loan. Those that are looking to upsize, whichever one, pick the one that resonates with them. Then you can ask them the question of, well, what type of loan have you been pre qualified for recently? Value first, questions later. But the only way that you can actually put that into perspective is practice, right? You've got to practice. Let me give you another resource. And I want to go to tie downs and embedded commands. Here's an example of a tie down. 
certainly you will sign the contract when you realize I can get you what you want for your house, shouldn't you? Uh, it's lucky that I called you today, or you might have made the same mistake twice. Isn't that true? Now, these are examples of the actual types of sentences that you would want to learn for yourself to write them down. What is a tie down? A tie down is a question that gets them to move forward before you get them into what we call an embedded command. So a tie down are simply what I'm sharing with you in front of you now. Isn't that what you want? Does that work for you? Won't that be great? Okay, don't you think? Don't you? Don't we? Didn't you? Didn't it? Won't that be great? Right? Can't you? Can't it? Wasn't it? It moves you into the next part of what we call an embedded command. We want them to move into these places so that we can use those sentences. For example, an embedded command is feel good, get excited, do it, sign the contract, buy this house, come to the office, decide tonight, get moving now, feeling compelled, make a decision, say yes, do what I say, you like me, set an appointment. Now that I've kind of given you those two things, I'm going to take you right back to what I started with. Certainly you will sign the contract when you realize I can get what you want for your house, shouldn't you? We've got an embedded command, you will sign the contract, and then we have the tie down, shouldn't you? So that's what you're going to do. You're gonna work on those things. And the only way to do that is practice, right? So it's important that you create your own sentences and I'm happy to share these with you, of course, because you wanna be able to speak the way you speak. And so it doesn't sound robotic, right? Look at number four. You simply have to take this offer to get to your new home. Don't you agree? Don't you agree is a tie down. Take this offer is an embedded command. Does that make sense? So I'm hoping it does because I want you to get rid of your allergies and look at the importance of role playing because repetition is the mother of skill, most definitely. Now, as we wrap it up just a little bit here, I'm gonna take you back in and we will move to kind of look at some other things. I don't want you to get stumped. Don't get cornered. Don't get eliminated by them saying, I'm moving on to work with someone else. Get them wanting more of what you offer, period. If you're using um in a lot of your speaking, it's because you're lacking the practice and you know you need to stop doing that. So I want you to get encouraged to start practicing. You know what they say in, um, on the football field or in any type, type of athletic sport, you play how you practice. My son is a violinist and he definitely, definitely says that with all of his students. You play how you practice. So we definitely need to do a lot more practicing. I've got a couple more that I wanna share with you. So let's say, for example, it says, someone says to you or asks you this question, is it a good time to buy? Well, what's the question that you're gonna refer right back? Well, what area are you considered buying in? What area are you considering buying in? What is your initial investment or down payment? What would your greatest gain be by buying a home today? Great questions are going to elicit a response. Got to give them some time to think about it. And then remember, be a good listener. Is it a good time to buy? What is your dialogue? What is the next thing that you're going to say to someone? So I've given you an example. You know, it's a great time to purchase when you're financially ready to buy a home. The market is shifting slowly into a buyer's market, which gives buyers a little more negotiating power than they had in the last two years. Lenders have diff different affordability options and the loan limits have increased, giving more room to find a home suitable for your needs. As for interest rates, remember, it does not have to be permanent. When the rates decrease, and they will, although we don't know exactly when, you can refinance into a lower rate and you will then have the discipline of the higher payment that you can now save more. 
All I want you to think about is the only reason you say, um, and you get stumped is you cut because you don't have your own dialogue already embedded inside of you. You need to create it so that it comes from you and that it's not robotic. And that takes practice. Is it a good time to sell? Well, there is no right answer for everyone. Your, lo your local market certainly plays an important factor on the sale of your home. Overall, we are still in the midst of a seller's market, which means it could be a great time to sell if you've researched all your options. It would be only fair for me to help assess your personal situation and your reason for selling. Remember, a seller's, mar seller's market also means it may also be difficult for finding your next home. Some factors to consider, do you have enough equity? Buyers may be asking for concessions for rate buy downs at this point in time due to the interest rate hike. Will your need to relocate enhance your life? I'm saying this quickly because we're going through um, a time of reflection for you to be able to look back at it as I coach and train. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to say this without any challenge, just your way. So I hope this, you, you found this helpful. And if you would like these resources, all you need to do is email me at mj at aceitwithmj.com. And if you're also looking for some weekly training, you're more than welcome to come and join the membership at Coaching Tanko 2, where we do weekly training and we also have some group coaching. All my information is right there in front of you. And I hope that I'm able to help you put the ace in your pocket. Go out and crush it. Take care. Bye for now.